Distinctive feature is a feature of the sound system of a language that serves as a crucial distinguished mark between two phonemes. As the distinctive feature of voicing, which distinguishes, for example, b from b in English. The uses of distinctive features is to specify a phoneme and its class, and to describe the set of speech sounds used in a particular language or dialect. Now, we begin with consonantal features. Consonantal features are only applied to consonant phonemes. This contains place of articulation, manner features, and voicing. First, the place of articulation. This feature distinguishes phonemes depending on in which part of the mouth we produce the sound. The glottal sounds such as H produced in the back side of the mouth in the vocal tract or more specifically in the glottis. The velar consonants happen when you raise the back of your tongue to the velum to block off restrict airflow. The example of velar consonants are K, K, and W. Palatal consonants happen when you raise the tongue to the heart palate or the roof of your mouth. The example of the palatal consonant is Y. Post alveolar or alveopalatal consonants such as SH, S, CH, and CH occurs in the place between heart palate and alveolar. And then the alveolar consonants, such as n, t, d, s, z, and l, occurs when you raise your tongue to alveolar reach to block or constrict airflow. And then dental consonants. Dental consonants occur when you block or constrict airflow by placing your slimy tongue against your upper teeth. The example of dental consonants are th, as in the word thick, and th, as in the word rather. Labiodental consonants occur when you block or constrict airflow by curling your lower lip back and raising it to touch your upper row of teeth. The example of labiodental consonants are th, as the word frog and v as in the word vine and the last bilabial bilabial consonants occur when you block or constrict airflow out of the mouth by putting your lips together example of bilabial consonants are p p and um And the next feature is the manner of articulation. Manner of articulation is the way the airstream is affected as it flows from the lungs and off to the nose and mouth. The first one is the nasal consonant. Nasal consonants are created when you completely block airflow through your mouth and let the air pass through your nose. There are three nasal consonants in English, um, an, and ng. And then, the stop consonants. The stop consonants occur when you block up the air, and then the air quickly builds up pressure behind the articulators and then release it in a burst then you produce the sound English contains the following stop consonants p, p, t, d, k, and g and then we have fricative consonants while nasal and stop consonants involve a complete 
blockage of the vocal tract. Fricative sounds involve only a partial block of the vocal tract, so the air has to be forced through a narrow channel. For example, is the phoneme f in the word frog, v in the word vine, f in the word thick, v in the word rather. Fricative consonants usually make a hissing sound when you produce it. And then we have affricate manner. This is actually stop consonants mixed with the fricative consonants. Affricate consonants start as stop sounds with a plosive air and then release through a narrow channel as a fricative. English affricate sounds are ch and j. Now we just have to add a little bit more features and vowels. So, some features are used in consonant are consonant high, low, back, and round. There's two more. Tense and front consonant. And now how all of these features determine for each sound produced by our mouth. We start from tenseness and laxness. Is the vowel tense or lax? For example of tense is e and for lax is e. Tenseness is usually has longer duration compared to another vowel. And narrower mouth width will lackness widen mouth width and certain duration. And then next is high and low vowels. In this matter, the height of our mouth determine on what the vowels are. For high vowels, the tongue is lifted closer to the roof of the mouth, or so called palate. While low vowels tend to lower the tongue, make it near to the jaw. And then there's mid vowels, where tongue location is in the middle of the mouth. For example, E is high, E is mid, and A is on the low. After that, the frontness and backness of vowel. These vowels determine on how they are articulated. For the front, these vowels are articulated towards front of the mouth, without creating a constriction. For back, the position of the tongue located far at the back of the mouth, without creating a constriction as well. For example, A is front and A is back. There's also central vowel, where the tongue position at the central of the mouth. E, for example. Rounded and unrounded is only determined on how the lips form. The lips form a circular opening if rounded, and the lips relax when unrounded vowels pronounced. 